I'm up early. I don't like to be up early, but I have to go to Salina, Kansas for a meeting three hours away. It's barely light outside. Let me tell you how not light it is. I am the most shiny bright thing outside right now. Me. Shiny and bright. very fortunate in that I do not ordinarily travel during rush hour. I hate rush hour. I hate rush hour drivers. Here's the thing about Kansas City and the Midwest generally when it comes to driving. Kansas City and the Midwest is the best in every single way except driving. People here are assholes. The moment you click on your blinker to show that you're going to get over, they speed up to cut you off. I freaking hate Midwestern Kansas City drivers. Yeah. I do a lot of driving for my job. You serve an area as big as Kansas and Missouri, you do a lot of driving. One of the ways that I pass the time is by listening to audiobooks and podcasts. This morning I was listening to a podcast called You Are Not So Smart. It deals with self-delusions, logical fallacies. The latest episode up uh, is one on bullshit. Fair warning, when you talk about a topic like this, you have to say the name. I'm gonna say bullshit a lot. Put on earmuffs if you're sensitive. Now, I really encourage you to listen to the episode. I'll link it down in the doobly doo But the thing that struck me was the part of the conversation where they were talking about how bullshit is really a product of our desire to make meaning out of things. The folks who have studied this say that we have a bias towards assuming that things are going to make sense. And so even when unbelievably bullshitty things are said, if they sound profound, if they even adhere to the basic structure of grammar, we assume that if it sounds profound, it is profound. One of my favorite things to say in a theological conversation is, that just sounds like a bunch of theological words. I think that a lot of times, people who do the kind of work that I do fall prey to sounding profound when what we're actually doing is just spouting a load of bullshit. And so people hear these bullshit laden statements and because they feel right, because they sound right, we decide to oftentimes defend them with our very lives. But if you explore them, if you break them apart, if you break them down, there's usually no truth to them whatsoever. People of faith do this kind of crap all the time. And I'm not just talking about Christians, like I'm talking about all sorts of people of faith. And I don't necessarily think that we should be faulted for this. I mean, it's a it's a natural human tendency. We want we want the experiences of our life to make sense. And that's why people say things like, "Well, you know, I believe that all things happen for a reason." Bullshit. God's not going to give you anything more than you can handle. Bullshit. But don't get me wrong. I'm I'm professionally religious. I, I would call myself a person of faith. I've staked my claim on the idea that there's something going on in the universe, in the cosmos, in all of creation that is far beyond anything I can understand. But I don't think that that gives me any license to say things like, well, you just gotta take it on faith. Bullshit. Because oftentimes, we don't even know what that means. Do you know what that means? You've just gotta take it on faith? If what you mean when you say that is, well, we just need to believe these things regardless of whether or not there is evidence, friends, that's not faith, that's superstition. And superstition is bullshit. Yay, I've reached Salina. I'm here for a meeting. I always go to meetings. That's what Presbyterians do. Presbyterians go to meetings. I'm out here near the Kansas Tallgrass Prairie.
Reserve out near Manhattan, Kansas. This is absolutely gorgeous. I'm in a section of the state known as the Flint Hills. I talked to, on Christmas Day about how Kansas is scientifically flatter than a pancake, but the hidden gem of Kansas is, uh, is the Flint Hills. I'll have to drive back through here in the spring and show you some of what it looks like when it's green. When I see pictures of Ireland and I see Chase County and the Flint Hills in the spring, I can, I can barely tell the difference. This is what people don't understand about living in Kansas and living on the prairie. They just don't get the beauty of what this is. I'm in Topeka on my way back home and I decided to get off the highway and see if I could find Westboro Baptist Church. It's only about a mile or so off the highway and I gotta admit like my heart is pounding. This is a horrifying place and people from the Midwest, particularly Kansas and specifically Topeka, are pretty embarrassed by the idea of Westboro Baptist Church. Like, we hate being associated with it. I don't know what I'm gonna do when I get there. You know, I was talking about bullshit this morning. Seems like a pretty good place to visit if you wanna see an epicenter of bullshit, yeah? I don't know if you can see it, but there's a rainbow-colored house right there. It's called the Equality House. It's right across from Westboro Baptist Church. Oh, I love that. That makes me so happy. Oh, yeah. Westboro Baptist, God Hates America, Fag Marriage Dooms Nations, Sodom Gave Itself to Fornication and Homosexuality. If I were braver, I would get out of the car, but I'm not. I'm a coward. Yeah, like all of these, all of this, these, this is the compound. You see all the fences? All of this is the compound. Phelps Roper clan lives here. That's just a I started to say that's embarrassing, but I don't know if embarrassing is the right word. It's just, it's horrifying. It's horrifying. There was an article, I think it was in Vanity Fair, Atlantic, I'm not sure. I'll find it and I'll link it in the doobly-doo about Megan Phelps Roper, who left the church. She's the one who was on Twitter. I'll link her Twitter down in the doobly-doo as well. Like, she's a prime example of a person who started to realize that what she was being taught and what she thought was just bullshit and she started to examine it and she had some really great help like there was a rabbi who was instrumental in her work of becoming a new person christian types call that metanoia it literally means changing your mind and it, it hurts, it's painful. And that's the thing about bullshit. Like, it's enticing and it makes sense. And oftentimes it makes sense because that's all we've been taught. It hurts to change your mind. they think they mean. 